my name is Kat and today I'm hauling books. So I have been doing a lot of reading lately. Now you may be aware that I finished writing a book about a month ago. And since finishing my book, I have read 13 books in the last month. This has been the greatest reading month I've had in years. Quantity wise and quality wise. Like I, I'm just, I'm having a great time. And I talked about a lot of those already in my last book haul. So check that out if you haven't. But for this video today, I have a nice little stack of books here. Tis the season of series finales. So Got some exciting stuff to talk about today. Let's get into it. First up, I have here A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. And this is the Booksplosion Book of the Month pick for December. We're working with Bloomsbury on this one, so huge thanks to them. This book came out earlier this year. It is the first in a series, and the second book in the series comes out in January, in just over a month. So it's the perfect time to get into book one. And the basic premise of this book is that it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but what really grabs my attention here is that the cursed prince is from a fantasy world, but the girl who is kind of kidnapped and brought to him is from our modern everyday world. And I just adore that trope. Like I love the juxtaposition of like a modern character who finds themselves trapped in the past or trapped in a fantasy world. Like I eat that stuff up. So yeah, I am very excited for this. Like one of my favorite tropes meets one of my favorite fairy tales. I, I'm just, I, I cannot wait to get to this next month. But yeah, I'll go ahead and put all of the Booksplosion read-along details down below in case you're interested in joining our read-along for this book. The next book that I have here is Reverie by Ryan Lasala. This is a debut novel and it's actually not yet out. It comes out next week on December 3rd. Reverie is going to be the Booksplosion Book of the Month pick for January. We're working with source books, so I was fortunate enough to get an early copy. This is about a teenage boy named Kane who is found half dead in the river and his memories are all messed up. He doesn't remember how he got there or what happened afterwards. But it's not just his memories that are messed up. It feels like reality is messed up, like something weird is going on. So Kane is trying to piece everything together and figure out what's going on. And he meets these three people who tell him that they are his friends and that they can help him. So Kane finds himself dragged into this other world of worlds, of dreams and realities manifesting and blending together. And Kane, along with his possible friends, might just be the only ones who can stop reality from unraveling completely. I really love books that explore dreams and alternate realities and stuff like that, so this sounds right up my alley. I've also heard that this book is very queer. I feel like I saw a blurb or a review on Twitter that described this as a queer fever dream, and that sounds really, really cool. I cannot wait to read this. And again, all of those Booksplosion details are down in the description if you're interested in joining us for this read-along. The next book that I have here is Coral by Sarah Ella. And I received this book from the publisher Harper, who is kindly helping to sponsor this video. This is a modern retelling of The Little Mermaid by Hans Christian Andersen. And what really intrigues me about this retelling is its focus on mental health and mental illness. In this book, we're following three main characters. The first is Coral, who is a mermaid. And in this mermaid society, there is a, a terrible disease that humans carry known as emotions. And Coral fears she might be infected. And then we have Brooke, who is staying at this group therapy home and she's struggling with depression and anxiety. And the only thing that kind of brings her peace is being by the ocean and having that cool comfort. And then we have Merrick, who is dealing with a controlling father and an absent mother, and his younger sister just attempted suicide. Obviously, our three characters are going to meet and these different worlds are going to collide, and it sounds like we're gonna be exploring a lot of themes surrounding 
grief and mental health and recovery. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting into this one. The next book that I have here is The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. This is the third and final book in the Folk of the Air trilogy, and I flew through this trilogy. I devoured it over a couple of days. You see, Holly Black is one of my favorite authors of all time. And because of that, I did not start reading this trilogy until book three was just about here. Because I knew I was gonna love it, and I saw how people reacted after finishing book one and after finishing book two, and I was like, I, I'm just gonna wait until I can binge read the whole trilogy. And I had a great time doing that. This trilogy was in my five star predictions video earlier this year, and surprise, surprise, your girl called it. This this was a five star trilogy for me. I, I loved every book. I just, I, I love the characters so much, like Jude and Carden. Mm, I have so many feelings about them. Ha! <laughs> but yeah, I just adore this trilogy. I actually read this book twice because the first time I read it was just like running on pure stress. So I, I enjoyed it a lot more the second time. I just wish the series was longer. It's like kind of specifically this last book. It's only like 320 pages. I want more. I want all the books. I would read another 12 books set in this world following these characters because I just, I love them so much. So I know I'm late to the game here. Like I know that this trilogy has already been hyped on booktube for like the last two, three years. So I don't know if my recommendation means anything at this point, but I adore this series. I adore Holly Black. I, I just, I love Holly Black's writing and her characters and just the atmosphere and the world. But yeah, just fantastic trilogy. One of one of my faves of the year. One of my faves of all time. I highly recommend it. It was, it was, it was great. Another series finale that I read this month was Supernova by Marissa Meyer. This is the third and final book in the Renegades trilogy, which is a kind of dystopian superhero versus supervillain kind of story. We follow two main characters who are on opposing sides. One is with the villains and one is with the heroes. But as many superhero stories explore, there's a bit of ambiguity over who exactly is a villain and who exactly is a hero. I already considered Marissa Meyer one of my favorite authors, but this this book, this trilogy, just really cemented that for me. I think she's especially great at world building and action and fight scenes. So many great action sequences in this book that were so engaging and just painted like a, a wonderful visual. I will say that I didn't love the romance. I didn't dislike it. Like it's it's good, but I just didn't get those intense, shippy feelings for the main couple here. I liked them and they were cute together, but for me, my favorite part was definitely uh, the, the world and again, the action scenes. But yeah, I just really love Marissa Meyer's stories and her storytelling style. Her worlds are just so cool and creative. I loved exploring the politics and the superpowers of this world. It was just really good and I would definitely recommend this trilogy. The next book that I have here is The Toll by Neil Schusterman. This is the third and final book in the Ark of Scythe trilogy. I have not read this book quite yet, but it is my next read because I just read Scythe and Thunderhead and I am so ready for the finale. Just like with Queen of Nothing, this is a trilogy that I intentionally put off reading until I could read all the books because I had a feeling I was gonna love it. This trilogy was also in my five star predictions video and 
I, I can't speak for the third book yet, but the first two books were definitely five stars. So I'm really good at predictions. Though this was actually one of the uh, sort of question marks on my five star predictions list because the other authors like Holly Black, I, I knew I loved her writing and her stories. So that was an easier prediction. But this is my first Neil Schusterman reading experience. So there was a little bit of a, a mystery factor as to, you know, whether or not I was gonna like this trilogy. But yeah, I, I do like it. It's very, very good. It's not necessarily something I might have picked up entirely on my own based on the premise, but seeing so much hype about these books from people on booktube, especially from people whose taste aligns with mine, I I, ha I had a good feeling and I, yeah, I'm just, I'm really excited to finish this trilogy. It is a 600 page book though, so like, it's a thick one. We'll, we'll see how long it takes me to read this. Hopefully by the end of this week. I think, I think that's gonna be my goal. I think I can do it. I, like I said, I've been in a great reading mood lately. <laughs> Next up I have here Dark Dawn by Jay Kristoff. This is the third and final book in the Nevernight trilogy, which is an adult fantasy about a girl named Mia who is training to be an assassin to get revenge. This was yet another trilogy that I put on my five star predictions TBR, but with this trilogy, I haven't started reading it yet. That's not entirely true. I read like the first 50 pages of the first book a while ago, but then I wanted to wait until I had all three so I could read them all together. So now I have all three. I might try to get to this after the toll, but I might need a little bit of a break from series and series finales after flying through all of these this month. But yeah, from what I've read and from what I've heard from other people who love this series, it, it really does sound like exactly my kind of shit. I'm still holding firm on the five star prediction, you know, like I, 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 I'm pretty sure I'm gonna love it. Next up, I have here, no more series finales. Those were the finales. Now let's talk about a cute little graphic novel called Mooncakes by Wendy Zhu and Suzanne Walker. This is a standalone paranormal supernatural graphic novel. Basically, this is about a queer witch and a non-binary werewolf who were childhood friends and they reconnect, they get a second chance at romance while also having to fight this demon spirit in the woods. So yeah, if that sounds interesting to you and you like graphic novels, then I, I would definitely recommend picking this up. It's a really cute story that has kind of an equal focus on uh, the relationships, you know, our relationship between our two main characters and also family relationships, um, as well as this awesome supernatural kind of spooky plot. But yeah, it was cute and fun and beautiful and just everything I look for in a graphic novel is is really good. And finally, the last book I have here is the Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. This is an adult fantasy standalone and I don't actually know a ton of specifics because every time I look at the synopsis of this book I get a little overwhelmed by the complexity of the story like it seems like there's a lot going on which honestly is what I would expect from the author of The Night Circus. I adored The Night Circus. It was beautifully written and so lush and atmospheric, but it was also a very complex story. So the very basic premise of this book is that we follow a young man who discovers this mysterious book in his campus library and he starts reading through it and he comes across a story of his childhood. Like a story about him as a boy is in this book that was written before he was ever born. So he's like, what's up with that? <laughs> Understandably. <laughs> and he finds himself drawn into this underground world that's like a labyrinth of a library 
and he's exploring stories and romance and mystery and that that sort of vagueness is all I really know and all I really need to know at this point. Like I said, I adored the Night Circus. So I was already like by default interested in Erin Morgenstern's next book. But while her debut was uh, about a circus, which is something that I am not particularly interested in, this book is about books and stories and uh, a library and I am very 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 into that. I've also heard amazing things about this book already. Like a couple of my friends have already read this and they already said it's one of their favorites of the year. So yes, very much looking forward to jumping into this. Okay, that is it. Those are all the books I had to haul and talk about today. Thank you so very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a wonderful night and I will have another video up soon. So I will see you then. Bye!